Yeah, well, my seeking was quite developed before I came. Um, I won't go all the way back because it's a very long story, but um, basically I'd had a musical experience. I'd bought a saxophone, and two weeks after I'd bought it, I was trying to play along with a jazz record, and I was trying to get the mode of the, the, the music that was on the record and try and f feel my way into it, and suddenly something kicked in, and... Uh, suddenly I was playing and it was complete freedom and I was flying all over the place I was playing precisely all the notes that I ever dreamt of playing and it was just a, a completely liberating experience and the next evening I thought All right, I've cracked it I know how to play now and I picked up my saxophone and it just wasn't there it, what I, I'd had that evening had completely gone and so I was I thought, now, what, what happened there? I mean, it's, it's something amazing happened there, and how can I get it back? And I had this experience two or three times, sometimes playing with other people, which was an incredible experience as well, because you seem to enter an area where, without saying anything to the other person, you were on each other's wavelength, and it was um, very tight. And I could see this happening as well in other performances, great performances of music. And uh, subsequently I've learned all art sort of comes from that space. Um, was highly spontaneous and it, it came from somewhere within. And I read books where uh, musicians were saying, I become my instrument and my instrument becomes me and I'm no longer human. Um, and... Um, uh, one jazz musician was saying, this music is coming directly to you from the creator. Mm. And so I knew there was something that I wanted to find. And I was looking into the coolness of the whole jazz thing, the whole cool <coughs> side of jazz, being relaxed in command of the situation. And so that led me to, well, how do you become relaxed in, in, in that way? And so I started looking at meditation. And I was reading books on meditation. I, uh, at that time, I was reading different scriptures as well. For some reason, I started reading all different scriptures and realizing that they were all saying the same thing. All the virtues in all, all these these great people were talking about the Buddhists, Muhammad, uh, Lao Tzu. They're all saying the same thing, and I couldn't understand why no one else could see that. And um, at the same time, I started becoming. I moved out of London and moved into the countryside, and I was becoming more and more of a recluse because I was f feeling that no one really was on that that wavelength, and uh, wondering really what it was all about. When um, some friends of mine came down for the weekend, and they had in tow with them a, a Sarge yogi, and we went down the pub and. <laughs> The first noticeable thing was that this guy wasn't drinking. And uh, I said, oh, why, why aren't you drinking? And he said, oh, uh, it's my meditation, man. If you, if you meditate properly, you don't need to drink. I thought, oh, this sounds interesting. Because I'd already come to the conclusion that maybe these, <laughs> these habits weren't good for one. And uh, then I said, well, why not? He said, well, it's your kundalini. It affects the kundalini. I said, well, what's the kundalini? And he said, I can't tell you. I said, well, is it, is it the Tao? Because the first stanza in the Tao Te Ching is the Tao that is spoken is not the sacred Tao. And he said, well, I don't know. I don't know what the Tao Te Ching is. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, we know now that the, the Tao is the same as kundalini. And uh, so we went back to the house and he said, I asked him more and he said, oh, there's this Indian lady behind it. And uh, he said, here, go and listen to this tape. He didn't come into the room with me. <laughs> I was listening to this tape. He just sent me into another room. And I listened to the tape. And I suppose uh, I felt very meditative while I was listening to the tape. The funny thing about what was on the tape was that Sri Mataji was actually talking about it being now the time that the... The, the sages and seers come up down from the mountains and out of the woods and back into the cities because they, we were needed there 
I thought, oh no, I've just moved out of London. This is 1980. It's 19. precisely 30. Well, I met Stream Strategy for the first time precisely 30 years ago last Wednesday. Oh, fantastic. What um, was it like when you met her? Uh, well, because I've been, I'd taken quite a few drugs, <laughs> so uh, I suppose I was expecting something a, a little bit more um, cosmic than I actually got on the evening. I was expecting you know, a lot of fireworks, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't like that at all. Uh, Saj Yoga is never what you expect it to be, and. It was very serene, very s subtle, um, and I can't say I felt vibrations. I felt, I felt sensations in my back. I felt a lot of love from the yogis and uh, from Sri Mataji herself. Um, but um, I, I went away feeling that something had definitely happened, but I, I couldn't put my finger on what. Um, yeah, and I, I felt. Felt, yes. felt it in my heart, yes, that something had happened. Yeah.